about time you showed up. We got a huge pile of BS for you today. change it up a little bit today. I know all the viewers out there are really, really pumped up to watch me bend and shape my tube. Exactly. So we're getting away from doing all the hardline repair under the dots in today. Uh, we're going to switch over to something that uh, has to be solved with every KA swap into a Datsun. Let me start by saying this. I know in the last video I said I was gonna work on the brakes on the Datsun, but it turns out I need a lot more parts than I originally thought. So I'm waiting to stockpile and order up all those parts at once. Then I can get to the big brake video on that car. What I have right here are the parts that's gonna let me do this. Here's what I'm talking about. When you KA swap a Datsun, mostly, at least from what I understand, these cars did not come with power steering. KA engines from the factory ran the accessories with a separate belt for each one. I think the only two accessories that shared a belt were the air conditioning compressor and the alternator. Other than that, the water pump and the power steering pump, which resides somewhere over here, each one of those was run off of a separate serpentine belt off the balancer here. Anybody doing a KA and a Datsun, we don't have power steering. So in order to run the water pump belt, you have a couple of choices. Number one, you can buy a kit from Excessive Manufacturing that is a bracket that mounts to the side of the engine over here uh, using these holes right here, I think, those three. And it puts an idler pulley right here somewhere on the front of the engine so that you can drive the water pump off of that idler and the crank down there. Another option, you can run individual belts for each accessory that you're gonna use, but that can get kind of tricky, especially if you have to add a tensioner or if you need an idler and there isn't one. And then you, some people end up running like their power steering pump as an idler. The other way to do it is what's called the single belt mod, using a bunch of parts from an old KA. So I'll go over to the bench, I'll show you what I've gathered, and then we'll get into mocking this up. So my KA did not come with a water pump or a water pump pulley. Uh, I got this off of a gentleman off Marketplace locally. He was a really good guy, thanks a lot for that. Uh, so this is the water pump pulley that I need. Now these two parts here, I got this off of a gentleman in Chicago. Thank you so much, Hector, I appreciate it. These are single cam KA24E alternator brackets, both lower and upper. From what I understand, and a lot of this information comes from uh, KAT.org, these parts right here allow you to move the alternator out far enough to where it will actually ride on the same belt as the water pump. And then you can use the alternator mount with its built-in tensioner right here can use the alternator as the tensioner to drive the alternator and the water pump on one belt. Benefits of this, you only need one belt and you have the two main accessories driven off of the crank at the front of the engine that you would need for any standalone swap. Uh, any of you guys running power steering or air conditioning, you have your own set of circumstances to overcome. But for me, this is what I need. So to start off, I think I'm gonna drop these uh, alternator brackets into the parts washer. Got these a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna run them through a sandblaster and then shoot them with black paint. All right, all cleaned up. And I think you guys should know by now, I don't shoot for perfection on this channel. So I did notice that this bracket right here has been modified and opened up the slot a little bit. I may have to repair that. Uh, so I'm gonna take these apart, take the bolt out of here, shoot them black, and pick up and set. All right, we'll let that coat dry, flip them over and do the other side. I don't know if you guys can see just how, how bent this bolt is. This is the adjusting bolt for the top of that bracket. So I'm gonna need a new one of these. All right, just to cover this really quick again to make sure I get everything. To do a single belt mod on a KA24 dual cam, you need the KA24 DE water pump pulley, KA24E single cam alternator brackets, both upper and lower. You need the dual cam 
alternator which came on your engine and then the hardware to mount the alternator bracket to the block. You will need only one belt. I believe it's a 35 inch three rib serpentine belt. As soon as I find that actual part number, I will put it in the screen below. I just gave this stuff one more coat, flipped a few things around, and let this sit overnight, come back tomorrow. All right, back out here. Uh, I got the accessories all mocked up on the front of the engine. So this is a look from the front. So here's the dual cam water pump pulley and the lower alternator bracket. You can't see it's behind there. And then here's the upper one with the adjuster. So it's hard to see at this angle. I'll, I'll see if I can move around a little. All right, so not sure how well you guys can see that. There's the water pump pulley, there's the crank pulley, there's the alternator pulley. So if you put a straight edge across the two front faces of these pulleys, it's hard probably to see that, but it does touch either pulley on either side. So these are in perfect alignment. And then if we touch across this pulley and across the two parts of the water pump pulley. I think there might be just like a 16 inch of slop here. So this is a single cam alternator bracket, puts the alternator in the right place so that you can use water pump right off of the front pulley on the crank down there. The only thing that may have to change is the water outlet. I have heard people say that the belt will hit right here because of where this is going. They say this sometimes um, contacts the thermostat outlet right there. There are a couple ways to fix that. One is using the single cam alternator, or sorry, uh, water neck. Because if you look straight down here, this one comes out two or three inches and then hangs a left. The single cam one is tucked in tighter, but it's almost too tight, and then it runs into the plug for the TPS right here. So a couple ways of fixing it. You can either cut this one down, move it over just enough so that it clears the belt, and then have it re-welded, or you can cut this and actually kind of notch it to bend it back, or you can use a single cam one with a spacer. So I'm gonna get the belt and see how bad it contacts this, and then I think I have an idea how to fix that on my own. I should also mention that behind this bracket right here, in between the alternator and the bracket, I needed roughly an eighth inch to maybe three sixteenths inch of washers stacked up, just so that when you tighten down the bolt here to the top of the alternator, that it doesn't pull this bracket over and actually end up cocking this pulley. So. If I do need to make any adjustments to the alignment, I can do that with a spacer back here, or if I have it aligned nice with the crank like it is right now, I can always take the alternator bolt off and put a, sh or a washer behind that as well to move it out just a little bit. Uh, that should be fine. So this, this all looks pretty good right now, uh, but I do need a couple other parts. Here is the finished product. This is what this looks like. Put the part number for the belt that works. This is a 35 inch long three rib serpentine belt. This is the part number you need to get this to work. There is a clearance problem with the water outlet and the belt here. However, it's gonna probably be tough to see, but there is actually a very small amount of clearance in there. I'd say it's like a 16th of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is mark this with a Sharpie pop the water neck off, take it over to the bench and just grind just a tiny bit out of this water housing or water outlet, just to see if I can get enough clearance to where I don't have to modify this any further. After some messing around here, I think we've got this to work. So here's the view from the front. We do actually have roughly an eighth inch or so of clearance between the belt and the thermostat housing. If that's possible for you guys to see, I don't know, but there is clearance between the housing and the belt. At this point, we are going to say that that might work. And uh, we're gonna assume that it's fine. If it's not fine, then uh, we'll figure that out later and it'll be a huge surprise in this crazy insurmountable problem that we have to fix, but that'll be later. All right, viewers, I think that's gonna wrap this up for the single belt setup on the KA.
So if any of you guys have questions on what needs to be done with this, please drop a comment, anything like that. I'm happy to answer what I can. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much. Um, if you're not subscribed, please hit that button. That would be huge. It helps the channel grow. Uh, thanks a lot to Steve, Steve 2.0. That's right. I know you guys can see that hornet in the background. There's some more coming on that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.